So I'm going to assume most of you have seen my plumbing modeling videos where I model this entire plumbing system. So I would highly recommend watching that first and that way you know how to model everything that we're going to be working with, but you don't have to to understand everything we're gonna do in this construction documentation course. So I just thought I would go over this and you can get access to all of these videos obviously in this course as well as the construction documentation videos. So make sure to check these out as well. So we're gonna continue on and in this project, we only have a plumbing floor plan. So we're gonna start from scratch basically. So now that we've modeled our entire plumbing system, we need to go ahead and create some construction documentation. And what does that mean? Well, basically it means that we need to show the reviewer or contractor everything in, inside of this model and we need to annotate it. And that's going to include plumbing tags, it's gonna include fixture tags, anything information that a contractor will need for when they're gonna build this system. So I'm gonna get started with creating all of my plumbing tags for this entire project. And so I've already created all the plumbing pipe tags and fixture tags that you'll need for your projects. So I would highly recommend going into these and messing around and, and seeing how I created them, but they're all here and I've labeled them MEP first so you can quickly access any of them. And basically they're just really easy to use. So we're gonna start in at our water service room and I wanna just start tagging some pipes. So let's zoom into this area. And what we'll do is we'll tag this piece first so anytime we're gonna tag something, we just go to annotate, tag by category, and Revit will start off by using one of the tags that is in our project. Now, if we wanna make sure that it's using the correct tag, we can go to this tags button and click on it, and then we can scroll down to our pipes, and you can see that the tag that Revit's going to use is this MEP pipe size tag, rotate with pipe, opaque. Now I know it says a lot in there, but basically it's very descriptive. It means this is a pipe size tag. It's going to rotate with our pipe and it's gonna be opaque or meaning it's gonna have a white background. So that does look like the tag I want to use. So if we wanted to use a different one, you can see we can hit the drop down and we can select all of these different types of tags that are inside of our project. So let's click okay and let's go ahead and just start tagging our pipe. Now you'll notice there's a leader associated with this tag. We don't want that for this type of tag. So I'm gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna click this little box up here for leader and then I can go ahead and I can just start tagging my pipe. So maybe I wanna tag it right here and that looks good. And maybe I wanna just tag different points of it. You can see right here, I can't fit the tag because it's just a little too big. So this would be a good time to use a different type of tag. And so what we could do is we could use a tag with a leader. And so I have a specific tag created for this. So if we go to the tags button and we go back down to pipe, if we click the drop down, you can see I have an MEP leader pipe size tag that one with an arrow and one with a loop. So let's go ahead and use the one with the loop and hit okay. And you can see now the tag is not rotating with the pipe and that's actually what we want when we're gonna use a leader. So we have to make sure we click the leader button up here and then when we hover into this pipe, we can click and then we can use a leader tag. And then we have to click one more time and then you can go ahead and go as far as you want. But usually I just click in the same spot and it creates this nice leader tag. I'm gonna click escape and then let's talk about the different types of leader tags you can use. So there's two types right here. There's a free end, which means that we can move this tag anywhere we want and that's usually what you're gonna want. So we can move this down and we can move this over and that looks really nice, something like that. But we can also, if we undo that, we go back to this, we can also use attached end. And what attached end will do is when we move our leader or our tag, our leader will move along with it. So this can be very useful too. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a leader tag like this and it's gonna have the attached end and that looks great for now. Maybe we wanna create another one. So let's go ahead and utilize the tag that we already have in this view. So I'm gonna create another leader tag. So I'm gonna click on it and then I'm gonna right click and say create similar. Now this time I don't wanna use the free end. I wanna be able to draw that little angle like I did before. So I need to make sure Actually, I do want to use the free end. So I'm going to click this pipe right here and that will allow me to stretch it down here. And you can see Revit will snap. So maybe I go to a point right here and then I snap this guy right there. 
and as you can see both of the tags are lined up perfectly so I want to actually move this tag over to the left a little bit more so I'm gonna move it back a little bit more to give myself a little bit more room and then I can go ahead and I can move this tag back and you can see Revit will go ahead and snap when it finds the edge of this uh, tag and that way you can kind of use it to keep your things or your tags consistent now we can move this landing gap or this landing line over and you can see that looks great and so now we've tagged this piece right here and then we've also tagged this piece right here so maybe I want to also tag this piece right here and so maybe I want to use this exact tag again so I can right click create similar and I'll just tag it from this point right here and then we'll go straight across and we'll click and then we'll click again now you can see that's right here so I want to move this down a little bit and since I'm using this time if I use if I start to move this since it's free end this won't move along with it so I might want to actually use attached this time so let me hit control Z I'm gonna click on my tag and let's use attached and now when I move it you can see it moves straight with my pipe so maybe something like that looks good so we've went ahead and we've tagged all these pipes we've went a little overkill but that's okay and now we want to continue tagging uh, maybe our sanitary piping. So I want to use this tag right here. So I'm going to click on it and I'm going to use create similar again. So this is just a very quick way of quickly creating tags by using create similar instead of having to go all the way up to annotate and clicking all those buttons. So we're going to get rid of the leader because we don't want a leader for this type of tag. And now we can just go ahead and tag inside these pieces of pipe right here, just like that and we can tag as many pieces as we want. Maybe when we want to tag all three of these. So we'll just click into each one and maybe I'll make the tag right there. If I want to delete a tag, I just can select it and hit delete and then that tag goes away. So I might want to actually use some leader tags along this area right here. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create similar for this tag right here. So let's hit create similar and this time I need to use a leader. So I have to click that button and again, we'll just click, click and then maybe we want to also tag this piece up here. So let's click, click, click. And now maybe we can move these tags down. So the nice thing about using the attached, so if we use attached for both of these right here, now what we can do is we can select both of them and we can move these to anywhere we want. So maybe something like this, that looks really good. And so I would also want to tag maybe these pipes that go down to my water heater. So we might have to use a different type of tag. So maybe we would want to use a tag like this, but we would want to put an arrow here. So I'm going to go ahead and create similar and then we'll use the free end and I'm going to click on this piece right here. And then I'm going to go over this way and click this way. Now, once I have this loop type, I want to change it to an arrow. So I click on the tag and then I can go to my drop down and I can change it to my leader pipe size tag arrow. And now I have a nice arrow. Now I can, since it's a free end type of tag, I can actually move this to a point right here. Now this tag is still referencing this point, but I, since it's a free end type tag, I'm able to move the arrow down to show that it's going down to my water heater. So that looks good. Now I might want to use another one that basically goes down to my hot water. So I can go ahead and click on this piece and right click and say create similar and maybe I click on this piece right here and I drag it over and I kind of line up to get in the right spot just like that and that looks great. Now you never want to overlap your, your tags or annotations so I would have to probably move this piece over so I could literally since it's the attached end type I could literally just move it up to something like this. But since I already have this tag right here, I don't really need to tag this piece anymore. So I can simply just delete it and that looks good. And now you can see I have all my tags. So we can go ahead and click on this hot water tag and move it over. And as you can see, that looks very nice. We could also move this three inch cold water tag maybe down this way, something like that. Or we could literally put one of these tags right here. We could click on it and right click and create similar and just go ahead and get rid of the leader and we could tag this right here and we could also create similar and tag it right here whatever you guys want to do so maybe we'll keep it like that and we'll just get rid of this tag right here so that's the nice thing about Revit it allows us to make these changes on the fly and we don't have to worry about changing the size because the size is actually coming 
from the information inside of this pipe. So Revit knows that this is a three inch piece of pipe and the tag will go ahead and read that information from that piece of pipe. Now, one thing I wanna show you guys is I've actually created a tag that can add additional information on the end of it. So maybe we want to say that this is a one inch and a quarter cold water down. And that's something that we typically do on our construction documents is we say the pipe's going down. So I've actually created a tag that has that capability. So if we click on one of the tags, we can hit the drop down and we can change it to a liter pipe size tag with a suffix. So I'm gonna click on that and you can see nothing happens, but if I click on my tag, now I'm able to add some comments to this tag and they will actually add it on the end of my text right here. So let's go ahead and put in a value and let's say DN for down with a period, hit okay. And you can see my tag has now updated with additional information. So maybe I'll move that over and move this back, something like that. That looks great. 